What's up developers, it's Dari here from Code with Dari, and welcome back to a new video where we're going to set up our database connection and play around with artisan database commands to see how everything works nicely together. Now in the last video, I showed you how the convict directory works, how it connects with the .env file, and how you can use that combo to customize your Laravel application. Today, we're going to put theory into practice, because one of the most common things you need to configure in any web application is a database. I expect that you already have MySQL installed and running. If not, pause the video, install it, or use a tool like XAMPP or Laravel Herd to spin up a MySQL server quickly. So before we touch any code, let's take it a step back. When you're building a Laravel application, your application isn't storing data directly inside itself. Instead, it talks to a database to read and write data. Laravel doesn't magically guess how to connect to your database. You have to tell it where the database lives, what the name is, and how it should access it. And that's where the .env file comes in yet again. So let's open our .env file. And let's scroll down a little bit and try to find the keys starting with db underscore right here. There is a chance you know what the value should be of these credentials, since you basically need to use the same values in a regular PHP project. But just for the sake of this video, let's cover them one by one. The first one is db underscore connection. This tells Laravel what kind of database to use. For us, for us, it's MySQL. But this could also be pgsql or postgres sqlite and so on the second one is the database host this is the address of your database server if mysql is running locally this will usually be 127.0.0.1 or localhost then we have the database port which is the port mysql listens on where the default one is always 3306 then we have db underscore database. This is the name of the database Laravel should connect to. By default, it always adds the name of your project. So since our project is named Laravel dash mastery and you cannot use dashes in MySQL, it replaces it with an underscore. Then we have db username and db password, where the username is obviously the MySQL username, which by default is root. And the password is the password for the specific user, in our case, root. This could be empty depending on your local setup, but mine is password. All right, we have set up all the values as we should. Now, if we open the convict directory for a moment, followed with the database.php file, you will find a database configuration file with a lot of data inside of it. Well, you have a section of connections here with all the different database connections, but the one that we need is MySQL right here. The driver is MySQL, which is the database driver Laravel will use for the connection. And we have the URL, which is an optional full connection string often used in platforms like Heroku. We have the host right here, which is the address of your MySQL service. We have the port, we have the database name, the username, password, we have the Unix socket, which is the path to a Unix socket for MySQL. We have the char set right here, which is the character set used for your tables. We have a collation, which tells how string comparisons are handled. We have the prefix, which adds a prefix to all the table names, which is by default empty. The prefix indexes, which will apply the prefix to index names, and so on. Now that we have talked about the database configuration file and we have set up our credentials, we have to make sure that our Laravel application can actually talk to a MySQL database. We can create a database manually by going to the terminal and right here basically say MySQL u root p and then create our database. But Laravel offers a pretty cool feature which only works when you have set up your database credentials in your .env file, which we already have done. What we can do right here is running the php artisan command and I want to follow it with the word migrate. Don't worry, we will talk about migrations later in depth, but for now, you just need to know that migrations in Laravel are like version controls for your database. Instead of manually creating tables or changing columns, you write small migration files in php code that describe those changes in code. So when you run them, Laravel updates the database for you. 
It keeps track of what has been applied so your whole team and even production stays in synchronization. Don't worry, we'll dive deeper into migrations later in the series. When we run this command, you will see that the terminal is prompting us with a message saying the database larval underscore mastery does not exist on the MySQL connection and is asking us if we want to create it. So let's say yes. You'll see that it has just run our migrations and I want to cover a couple other commands before we wrap up this video. And the next one is the php artisan db command. It's quite straightforward. What this command does is basically opening a new MySQL CLI session without adding the password. Pretty cool, isn't it? Let's run the exit command right here. Then we have another one since Laravel 10, which is the php artisan convict colon show database command. This will let you inspect the current value of a configuration file or a specific convict key. In this case, you're asking Laravel, show me everything inside the convict slash database.php file, including any .env value that has been resolved. So the driver, URL, database name, prefix, followed with the entire list. The next command is the php artisan db colon table command. This command accepts one argument, which is the name of the table you want to inspect. By default, Laravel always creates the users table, so let's write down users. The output right here includes all the important information about the table. You see a list of every column, so ID, name, email, email verified at, password, remember token, and the timestamps. You'll see its data types, so big int, varchar, and so on whether it can be null or not. So for example, the remember token, which is nullable, and whether it's an auto increment column or not, for example, for the ID. Basically, it's a full blueprint of the table directly in your terminal. Now here's why this command is especially useful. This command has to be connected to your database in order to fetch this information. I basically see this as a quick test to check if the connection settings are correct. If Laravel can't connect, you will see an error. If it can, you'll see the schema printed out. So let's navigate to PHP Storm for a moment. Let's open our .env file and let's just make a typo for a password. If we navigate back to the terminal and run the command, you will see that we have been prompted with an access denied for user message. Now let's quickly undo it because we don't want to have errors right here. Let's double test it and you'll see that it's up and running again. All right, that was it for now. I want to wrap up this video where I showed you how you could easily connect to your MySQL database. Make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell and follow along because we're going to go deeper and deeper but in a simple beginner friendly way. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at 10 must know Laravel configuration commands.